Straight on to business news now for you on the programme. This is about a major deal today in the microchip business, which has uh, fallen apart. And our business editor, Stephen Carroll, is here on set for uh, more details for us, Stephen. Stuart, it was the largest ever deal in this industry, but the American firm NVIDIA says now it won't be buying Britain's ARM holdings. The $40 billion deal being scrapped due to pressure from regulators in the UK, EU and the United States. The move would have seen NVIDIA take control of technology that's used in everything from mobile phones to factories, but authorities weren't pleased with the idea that the company would have too much control, potentially, over chip designs used by firms like Microsoft. The Federal Trade Commission in the United States had sued to block the deal in December. Arm Holdings' current owner now says it plans to take the company public in the coming year. Now, this is an industry that governments are paying close attention to as the global shortage of semiconductors has shut down factories in many parts of the world. The European Union will unveil its CHIPS Act later today, the goal to produce 20% of global supply by 2030. The total plan has a value of $42 billion. That's designed to rival the US, uh, 42 billion euros, I should say. That's designed to rival the US investment plan, which is worth $52 billion. Most of that money will come from EU member states, around 30 billion of which has already been announced. The rest will be a combination of EU and private funding. Let's take a look at what's happening on the markets next for you. Lots of companies' news keeping investors occupied on share markets today. European shares opening the day uh, pretty flat, just some small moves at the open. Shares in the French bank BNP Paribas, though, down 4% at the start of trading after announcing its latest results. That's despite profits for the bank coming in higher than expectations. In Asia earlier, we had a bit of a mixed picture on Asian markets as well. Uh, SoftBank, the owner of Arm Holdings, their shares down around 1% after news that deal had been scrapped. The Japanese firm actually reporting profits of around $250 million in the last three months of 2021. That was a fall due to a drop in value of some of its investments. But booking the trend on the Nikkei in Tokyo, elsewhere we have falls on the Hang Seng in Hong Kong as well. Next, the US president says that they're looking at alternatives to supplies of Russian gas for Europe as tensions over Ukraine continue. Moscow is the single biggest supplier of natural gas to Europe, making up around 40% of the continent's needs in 2021. If that were cut off, where else could countries get their supplies? Nicholas Rushworth has been finding out. Russian gas flows to Europe have been lower than usual for several months. The fear Russia may invade Ukraine is fueling concern about supplies. Wonderful to have our Washington on Monday vowed to help Europe get its gas from diverse sources around the world. We are looking at opportunities to make up for lost gas LNG from Russia. We think we could make up a significant portion of it uh, that would be lost. But you know, what everybody forgets here is Russia needs to be able to sell that gas. If there were disruptions to Russian gas supply, the Europeans could turn to the gas-producing countries in their own backyards, such as Norway. Oslo, however, says it is already delivering natural gas at maximum capacity. Another source is imports of liquefied natural gas from countries such as the United States and Qatar. There is a limit, however, to how much suppliers can produce and transport. Southern Europe can get gas from Azerbaijan via pipelines through Italy and Turkey. Imports from North Africa could be increased. The other options include reducing consumer demand and stepping up the switch to green energy, a move that Germany is working on. This year we will continue to take far-reaching decisions that will help us to use more wind energy, offshore and onshore wind energy, and solar energy, and expand the capacities, expand the grids. But such changes would take time for industry and consumers. Meanwhile, the Ukraine uncertainty and the rush to defend Europe's energy security will come at a cost, with price increases in the pipeline. Finally for me, Amazon is more than doubling the cap on salaries at its corporate offices. This as the e-commerce giant works to try and retain its staff. The pay ceiling for its tech and corporate workers will go up from $160,000 currently to $350,000. Now, these pay caps had been relatively low for a tech company. Amazon had been choosing to compensate staff with shares instead. But after seeing a rash of departures at senior levels, the company's made a change to this policy. 
Stuart, it's worth pointing out that these changes to big salaries don't apply to Amazon warehouse workers who earn an average of $18 an hour. Kelsey Free, thank you, Stephen. Stephen Carroll with uh, business for you on France 24.